easy English reading. Caught in a tree. I saw many strange and interesting people during my life in America, but I cannot remember a more original character than old Zeb Stump. He was one of the best hunters in the Mississippi region. He could kill a bird at 200 feet. He liked to tell us various stories. How many times I listened to him sitting beside a fire, and what interesting stories he told us. But there were many things I did not know about him. First of all, I did not know where he lived. Then I did not know if he had a wife. And lastly, I did not know where he got his money. And I saw that he always had a little money with him. But time went on. Day after day, we hunted together. And finally, I saw that he really thought I was his good friend. I then asked him to show me his home. He thought a little and then said, All right, I think I can show you my house. Come with me. And so I started with him to see his home. For many hours, we walked through a wild forest. And at last, Zeb stopped before a big tree and said, This is my house. Come in. There was nothing in front of us, only a big tree. But soon, I saw a door in the tree. He opened the door. We walked in. We came into a room. Zeb lived in this room, which was inside the tree. And in the room, there was an old woman. Zeb said, I'm glad you're at home, Maggie. This is my friend, Captain Main Reed. Captain Main Reed, this is my wife. I said to her, How do you do? Do you like to live here? She said, Yes, it is all right. <laughs> We all sat down, and Mrs. Stump gave us some coffee. During the coffee, we talked. I asked Zeb, Tell me how you live. Look, said he, and pointed to the corner of his strange room. I looked into the corner and saw many skins of wild animals. Do you sell these skins? I asked Zeb. Of course, he answered. And some people pay very well for them. But you never go to town. I don't like it. The old woman does it. She goes to all the shops. And she does it rather well. Mrs. Stump smiled. Yes, I think I can do it rather well, she said. We drank coffee and talked. And now, I said to Zeb, tell me your most interesting adventure. He smiled. All right, he said, but it is a very long story. Do you want to go to sleep? No, I said. It's still very early, and your stories are so interesting, I can listen for hours. And so he began his story. One day I was out in the forest hunting. All day I hunted and got nothing. In the evening I came near the Mississippi. I said to myself, it is late, I must go home. But then I thought, my wife is hungry and she wants some money. I must stay here till the morning. Maybe in the morning I can kill something. I saw a big tree and decided to rest under it. I was very tired. In two minutes I fell asleep under that tree. I slept till morning, but at four o'clock I woke with a start. The sun was still low, but there was a terrible noise in the air just above my head. I looked up, and in a minute I understood. Oh, I said to myself, young eagles. And then I remembered that there was an English gentleman in New Orleans who wanted a pair of young eagles for the London Zoological Gardens. This gentleman could pay good money. Here was my chance. I said to myself, I must get on that tree and get the young eagles. In two minutes I was on the tree. I can tell you it was not easy to get to the nest, but I thought about my old woman and the money which the English gentleman could give me, and at last the eagle nest was in front of me. In it, I saw two young eagles. There was also some food for the eagle family, meat and fish. 
Immediately I got into the nest and just prepared to take the young eagles out when I suddenly felt a terrible pain in the back of my head. I looked around. A huge bird was in front of me. It was the mother eagle. I shook her off, but she lifted her head again, ready for a second attack. I saw it was a question of serious fight. And you know these eagles, how strong they are. In short, I thought it would be better to get down, and I got down, not to the ground, however, but to a branch a little below. Here I sat down. I did not want to go home. I had nothing for my old woman, so I sat down and rested. I was tired, and I sat on my branch for some time. I think I even slept a little. And suddenly from below, I heard a terrible noise. It was like the crashing of branches and trees. I looked down, and what I saw was even more terrible than what I heard. Between me and the river, there were many large trees, and now they fell down one after another, and my own tree shook. I heard the cry of the eagles far above. I understood what it was, a flood on the Mississippi. Quickly, quickly, I tried to get down to the ground. I jumped from branch to branch, but it was too late. From one of the lower branches, I saw that my tree now stood in water. I looked in all directions, in front, to the right, to the left, behind, everywhere, was only water. As you know, I cannot swim, so I could only stay where I was. My tree shook slightly, but stood perpendicular. I sat on my branch the whole night. The next morning, I saw a boat on the river. I cried, help, but the people on the boat did not hear. They were too far. Soon a second boat passed. Again I cried, help! And again they did not hear me. A third, a fourth, and a fifth boat passed. And every time I cried, help! And they did not hear me. You see, the river is very wide at that place and all the boats passed very far from my tree. And so passed my first day on the tree. In the evening I began to feel very hungry. Then I said to myself, when I was at the nest, I saw they had some meat and fish there. I must climb to that nest again. I may have a fight with the mother eagle, but that is better than to die of hunger. And so I started to the nest again. Of course, the birds attacked me, but this time I was prepared and stood a good fight with them. I got some fish and ate it. Now I was not hungry, but soon I began to feel thirst. It was terrible. The water was so near and I could not think of any good method of getting water from the river. And then suddenly I saw what I could do. I took off my shirt and tied a string to it. Then I let my shirt fall into the river. In a moment I fished it out again. It was full of water. How glad I was to drink it. I lived six long days on that tree. Every day I paid a visit to the nest and got some food from it. One day it was meat. Another day it was fish, but every day there was something, and so I was not hungry. Every day I saw boats on the river and cried out to them, but they did not hear me, and there was always water under the tree. The Mississippi is like that, you know. The water can stand on the banks for months and months after the flood. I saw I could not stay on the tree all my life. At night it was cold and I thought all the time about my old woman. And so I began to think seriously about how to get away. I saw that now the eagles did not attack me anymore. They saw I did nothing bad to their young. Of course, every day they brought them meat or fish and I took some of it. But I did not take much and there was always enough for all the eagles. Soon I saw that we were quite good friends Often the eagles sat beside me on the same branch and just looked at me. And so now was the time for my plan. My plan was this. I knew that eagles have very strong wings. Of course they could not take me up into the air. But why could not the two eagles carry me down to the river? And then perhaps they could carry over the river. And I could help them a little by moving my arms and legs in the water. I thought it was a good plan. And so that same evening, I started to carry it out. 
To catch the two eagles was not easy, but I did it at last. Then I took my string and tied their legs. After this, I tied myself to the same string. Then I jumped. I jumped down straight into the river. I do not remember in detail how I got down, but my plan worked well. The eagles carried me through the branches down, 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 and soon I was in the river. Now the birds began to beat the water with their big wings. I helped them as much as I could with my arms and my legs. They went straight to the left bank. In less than five minutes, I was already in the middle of the river, and in less than ten, I was on solid ground. And what did you do with the eagles? I asked. Did you let them go? Of course not, said Zeb. I sold them to the Englishman. He wanted young eagles, but he took the old ones all right. He paused a moment. I got some money out of these eagles, I can tell you.